What is good? We're back. We got a got a special special old guest, old pal, old tripod, but it's a bipod. We got Big Cut. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good, man. Yeah, original tripod member. Back to be a bipod tonight. Happy to be here. Couldn't believe it's been since April. Had to look back and see. It's a nice lengthy absence and uh, missed it. Yeah, we're uh, we're excited. The the uh, F, the um, Patreon guys were excited. We asked for for some squads to uh, either hit us with some rebuild action, or you know, should we? Are we a contender, pretender kind of deal? Ship chasing or uh, docking at the bay and you know trading goods? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know, I like to dock at the bay and trade some goods. <laughs> yeah. Walk the pretty, streets. Pretty much your whole uh, trade streets. Yeah. How much time so, you got, buddy? So uh, we're gonna start with a little. Uh, kind of contender pretender you know is this guy in the hunt for a championship uh should you be selling assets into maybe a full-on rebuild or just kind of a little bit of a retool so yeah we've um, got a couple of teams here lined up that'll be a good time to uh look yourself in the mirror right who's the man in the mirror like, exactly like michael jackson said all right so the first one we got uh, a 12 man super flex non tight end premium. He didn't specify whether it was start three wide receivers or not. So we're going to go on the assumption that it is not. Okay. So no premium, but Kelsey's going to, you know, keep you perennially mid because <laughs> he's going to score you a bunch of points or he's going to keep be keep you a, a pretender with a, maybe not the most best team in the league. Uh, you, you can overcome some deficits. Kelsey can carry you to the playoffs. Right. But is he going to win you the championship with this team? Right. I'm not sure that that's the case. I think for me and my first overall impression with this team, it seems like maybe uh, you could retool here. And, um, you know, obviously Kelsey would be your, for me, probably one of the main pieces to, to help you. I don't, you, this isn't a teardown. I don't think completely. Um, you have some parts and pieces. It, it, you could go either way, I guess. Um, and you certainly could push. You could you could grab a piece or two, um, and and push push all your chips in. You know, obviously Kyler's going to miss a little time in the beginning, so you'd have to be relying on Baker. I think Lamar's going to crush right now. Their running backs are going down like crazy, which you know could, could be even better for your <laughs> yeah. fantasy points for Lamar. If you have to be, you know, take heavy and just stamp it like they do on ESPN hard. It's a, it's a, it's a pretender, you know? Yeah. It's a pretender for, it's, Agreed. It, you, you could push, you could put like, you got Lamar Jackson, Saquon Barkley, Travis Kelsey, you got the three pillars, you know, you got a foundation there to go to the playoffs. Um, we all know Lamar's missed time the last two years started out red hot. He was probably the QB one through first four weeks or something like that. Um, Travis Kelsey's, you, he, you could take away half his stats the last five years. He's still the tight end one. And Saquon was, you know, doing work last year. Alvin Kamara, only a couple games suspension. The, my problem with this team is you don't have enough week to week consistency out of your wide receivers. Kyler's missing, you, you know, so you got Lamar, you got a, a, a super flex spot right now who is either Baker Mayfield or position player not named quarterback with the Kelsey types level studs. You could easily be a contender most of the way through the season. And if you get some luck, you can make the playoffs and anything can happen. So this, it's not impossible that this, this team wins a championship. It's just that the odds, you know, are far, right? right? It's there is some tall odds to overcome. Um, again, we don't know two wide receiver, three wide receiver starts, but he also didn't list what his draft pick situation for the next year is. Right. Um, so that's also crucial information that as we far don't as have here. Pushing. As far as pushing. Yeah, you don't know what you have to buy with. Right. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that was gonna be my counterpoint is like you you could buy a piece or two and, and then all of a sudden you're ready to go. Cause like you said, you have pillars, you have Barkley. Mm-hmm. Then other than that, you got Kamara on a three game suspension and, and it's a coin flip at, at running back besides Damian Pierce. Right. Um, so and you then got he, Damian Pierce as your R B two, but like you don't have a a a stocked cupboard you know you don't have your aj right. dillons and your jk dobbins and you got a damian the harris uh, right. you know and you know and then your wide receivers you really don't have one guy you can lean on every single week to just produce for you no and we, i, I we like Pittman, but we want that quarterback to, we want that to be Pittman. i mean you could you you could rewind the clock and go back to philip rivers two years ago and Pittman was coming up you know and yep. then matty ice fell apart last year and uh, I mean, nobody likes Anthony Richardson more than us. 
Um, I just think, and he may come out there. I, I just think with the running game that they're about to deploy, Jonathan Taylor not in this conversation right now. Um, I just don't know. You week to week, Pittman's not going to have consistent high end, you know, weeks enough of them to make that play for you. I don't think, you know, like you said, you you don't want to be leaning on Pittman if you're chasing a championship. Right. Pittman's a fun player to have on your dynasty team, but he could also, if he does, you know, have a couple of good weeks for this team right here, you know, he, that could, he could be a part of a, a good package for you to sell, or you could hang on to him if, if, you know, yeah. Anthony Richardson's really young enough that you, right, you can kind of do enough, whatever you you're want. You're not in a hurry. Right. You're not in a hurry with Pittman. You don't feel any pressure with Pittman. This team right here, if this was my team, I would, you're never in a hurry to trade Travis Kelsey, but I had a conversation with you about this a couple of weeks ago with a different team, different, I mean, just, you know, I'm not even in this league. This is a screenshot, but if you're a, if you're a rebuilding team in my mind, like this team isn't as depleted as the one we referenced a couple of weeks ago in a conversation, this team is not, you know, I would be trading Travis Kelsey before he played a game. If I could, I'm not fire selling Travis Kelsey. I'm not selling him, um, <laughs> at, a, at a discount. Yeah. But the point is, he is 34. So if he were to, you know, Achilles, ACL, crazy Shit, just back Just a hammy could take six weeks. But I just turned 36, and the last two years were the first time where I had to be like, damn, all the, I used to be, I'm super flexible. Uh, you know, the only times I really ever got hurt were just crazy bone breaks that I had. Or yeah. Just like anybody would have broken their collarbone like that. <laughs> very flexible, very, you know, all of a sudden... Never had back. Pro- all of a sudden, I sleep sleep on my back wrong. Fucked up for two weeks. You know. Mm. All of a sudden, you did something a little weird. The kid kid was you know about to uh, hit her ball. head on the table. So you made a quick movement. All of a sudden, the hammy sore for two weeks. You know, you're yeah. you're approaching that territory. Wait till you turn forty. <laughs> yeah. And that quick try to you know corner save. Try to keep the kid from hitting his head on a corner. It's like you you feel bones rub in the back. You're like, right. oh that that didn't feel great. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not Travis Kelsey. No. Um, but I'm just saying Travis Kelsey's silky smooth. Yeah. He's so he's, he's silky smooth. He's, he's lavendered up. I think Travis Kelsey's going to be just fine. And this year sure. he's probably last year. He set career high, career highs and everything, mm-hmm. you know? Um, the thing is, is again, if, if you, you have that asset, trade him smartly, right? Mm-hmm. Don't put, if you, if, if you're trading Travis Kelsey, don't put a message out that says Travis, don't put him on the trade block. Mm. Don't put Travis Kelsey on the trade block. Send him to teams strategically, individually, just send trade offers. You know, don't sit, don't put, say, Hey, I mean, you could auction him off. You could sit and say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I don't have time to send 11 guys here, trade offers, you know, Taking the highest bid. Well, first for, of all, you, you can take the highest bid for Kelsey. You don't even need to send it to eleven. There's about four guys that you need to be focusing on sending Travis Kelsey to. You ain't got to send him to eleven guys because he's pointless for some for half the league. Well, that that is true, but you don't you don't want to assume uh, sure, that another yeah, bad fair, team doesn't fair. want to give you a really good first round pick in the package. They're not being they're not looking at themselves in the mirror. You don't want to you don't want to assume that you can't get that because there's you at know. least a couple teams you can eliminate that. You, I mean, you could send them to them, but you know you don't need to negotiate too hard with them back and forth. Agreed. You need Agreed. to target the top four or five teams and be like, hey, you want to win or not? And here it is. And for me, it's send it's send Travis Kelsey with a deal the first time that you know ain't going to get done. Yeah. And you set the bar up a little high. You don't send a bullshit deal where you're just like, oh, I got, like you said, I got to get rid of Travis Kelsey. You 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 should be take a couple minutes to negotiate here. Get, let me get a back it. and forth or two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to negotiate on Kelsey. I, that's your your perfect segue. To, I should have pulled up that trade on my phone and uh, in a, a league I'm in where somebody traded Travis Kelsey and. I sent him an offer and he didn't like it. And then he traded him to somebody else. And I was literally DMing him saying, Hey, your team is horrible. You just took it over. Thank glad, glad to have you in the league. You took over a bad team. Mm -hmm. You got to trade Travis Kelsey before he plays. Not today. This was two weeks ago, you know, Mm -hmm. so you got six weeks before the season starts. You don't have to trade Travis Kelsey today, but you need to trade him before he plays because you don't want him to get hurt on your team. He's your best asset. And he's basically your only asset. And the dude traded him two hours later. Yeah. And I, I would have given you more. So that's the, mm, you know, don't always a bummer. Can't have that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, pretender is this, this is a very medium pretender contender team. Uh, Lamar Jackson could start out hot. Lamar Jackson could finish hot L- between Lamar and Kelsey. That's the tickets to the playoffs right there. You know, so you got, you got enough to make it. 
And so if you if you don't agree with what Casey and I are saying and you want to push, I understand. But you could also take, you know, a look in the mirror and say, all right, where am I going to be in 12 months? Saquon's a year older. Does he get hurt? We don't know. Who is a running back? He, the likely ha- likelihood of him getting hurt is greater than most other positions. Travis Kelsey, if he did get hurt and it was a big time injury, then your, you know, equity is sinking. Um, you know, you don't have any. You got Quentin Johnson. He could be a monster. He could not be startable for most of the year. You know, right? Well, and he's just you can't rely on him. He's a nice. He's a great asset for you to have. Great but. long term. Yeah, great asset. He's a rookie. Right. He's a rookie. Um, you know, if Kadarius Tony has a couple of flash games when he gets back, that's a good player. You could package Kadarius in something for a, maybe get a first out of somebody if he's blowing up yeah, enough. Unfor- you know? Unfortunate little snag for your team there. Yeah, w- with this Al- team, right? Uh, but uh, you know exactly. So Alvin Kamara, he comes back, and you know the the way you tear this down, you don't you can't trade Alvin Kamara to somebody right now. But if Kamara gets back on the field, you trade him. You know you can't trade Kadarius Tony right now because he's hurt. But if a month ago before he got hurt, and now you got the Chiefs talking about him being the the wide receiver one and he's going to crush it that's you know right. you, you got to pick your windows that you know you the, well the the only way i would sell uh kamara now is in like a package with kelsey to a win now team who's like hey if this is going to get us over the top to get me a good deal right then then i then then it's like hey here's another guy you, you gotta wait you, you can you can i can't handle the wait in three weeks you can handle the wait in the three weeks i'm gonna point. give you Kamara and that'll get you over the hump to some people yeah and if you're not, if you're not going to get value for him then hold but he could be a guy for a winning team with with a trade in Kelsey that you could package up and be like this is a championship winning package here I'm gonna need you know picks and you know a young guy or two for you like you know you just said Quentin Johnson you know that'd be I'd be targeting if, if that team has a young wide receiver that they did if they got Jordan Addison I'd be trying to get like an Addison back or a Flowers back or, right you know you, you got Quentin Johnston we need to restock this wide receiver room with guys that that we're we trust i love the wide receiver room in general it just has no heavy hitters like these are all guys that i want to surround my wide receiver room with right for some depth uh but and you're hoping quentin johnson turns into a heavy hitter right that type of thing and and you know and and being super flex you're you're hoping that your trade partner has like a mac jones as his third quarterback and maybe you could pull in a mac jones while he's, the stock is down because kyler murray he'd be a great buy but his stock is down. He's on your team. Right, right, you know, right. So you can't sell him right now. Mm-hmm. But if, you know, if you're going that way, like I would be looking to move off of Lamar Jackson after a couple of weeks when he's crushing. And, you know, even if you were, um, if you could catch, tre- the, the lightning might be out of the bottle with Trevor Lawrence. But, you know, if you could catch yourself, maybe Anthony Richardson starts slow, you know, and Lamar Jackson's crushing. And, you know, you're going to, you know, you've already traded Kelsey potentially you know theoretically speaking in this example you traded kelsey already lamar's crushing so you get an anthony richardson plus plus or even a decent plus because i believe in anthony richardson um but you know that's the type of example i'll be looking for to move um and then you know in the kelsey deal maybe did you get that mac jones that did that really cheap mac jones did you get brock brock purdy before week one and you know now you got a if you look at Brock Purdy's game log, the last four, five, six weeks of the season, it was 20-something points every week. That's the kind of person you need in your super flex spot. That's the kind of person you need, quarterback you need as your QB3. Yeah. Again, we don't know his draft pick situation, but if you're deciding to take it that route, you're not in a super big hurry, but it, over the course of the season and as soon as possible, some of these big, you know, the Kelsey, you take Kelsey out of the lineup, then, you know, and, and Kyler's not playing, then you, you want to sink your draft pick. You know, mm-hmm. it, there's the whole part of the p- fun is being like, well, how fast can I get to the one one? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't you, you're not trading away Quentin Johnston to sink your draft pick. But, you know, you're taking if, uh, you know, Michael Gallup has starts out. I mean, if, you know, Michael Gallup. I love Michael Gallup, but that's, you know, he, he, yeah, he's, if he, if he he's gets one hot, of your, could you get it too? He's one of your starting wide receivers. That's how bad your wide receiver room is, you yeah. know? So, yeah, could you, could you get something for good, decent for Michael Gallup? But there's no reason to have him in your lineup if you're trying to rebuild. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, what which what, which one of these guys could I move to to re, reshoot on the twos 
you know, the, like a Gallup or, or a Mooney or, a you know, I mean, I get you can keep Mooney or Rondell. They're, they're both still young. I like them a lot. Gallup would probably be I like Gallup as a team that I'm drafting if I think I'm going to win and I need some depth and, you know, he can come in and play my wide receiver three or four position. I got it all day long. But. I got a team right now where my oldest player drafted so far. We're almost in. Well, I got a 10th round pick coming up here as soon as the next person picks. And I, the oldest person I got is Brock Purdy. Yeah. And I'm just having I'm just playing, having a good time. But I'll still draft michael gallup later right and and say it and, and just to have him and and trade him in season to somebody if, if he's pl- if he's playing well because he's going to go so late like that's how v- much his value is depressed um you know and if if you go if you keep going down this road like a damian pierce like damian pierce i know you're really big on him mm. um if the texans presumably show the forward movement that they look like they're having Maybe you can get something real. Maybe he maybe he can be a really good piece um, if to get some return on because even if Dema- Damian Pierce shows he could be as basically as good as he wants to be, he'd have to be uh, ridiculous to outweigh his draft stock capital value in the team's eyes type. The way you know you you see it all the time. The dude is great. Two years they draft a guy in the you know late for, you know late first early second and he's replaceable. Just not saying anything's happening to Damian. Not not this year. They obviously already had the draft and they're they're rolling with him. Um, Ooh, they just, love him too. And they, and they should. They uh, love he's, him. And especially you change that scheme up and it might be might be wills up for Damian Pierce. But that'd be a spot where you could get out of you know just because he's young. He's not 20 years old, but you could, that'd be a spot where you could get out of, uh, you know, get some good value potentially for Damian Pierce and, and into this, you know, just tear it down, rebuild it, have a good time, bring in a bunch of good picks, bring in a bunch of well, yeah, if young you, if, players. If you get down to a complete tear down, you don't really want any running backs on your team. That's kind of part of the how you tear down and, sure. and rebuild if you're. If you, you know, I don't know if you want to go all the way down to the sticks and, and trade the Lamars and trade, you know, everything out of there. Or you just try to make a move or two and then see what your draft pick situations is and where you are from there. Um, so, you know, I could kind of see that going either way. You know, Barkley is is the guy for me. Barkley and Kelsey are, are the moves that you try to make and pivot off of. Those are your biggest assets. Now, <clears throat> obviously, Lamar, a big asset as well. I'm 50 50 on whether or not I would move well, move him. But if you like you said, if you could move down to Richardson and gain, you didn't move down far. And the right. reason I mean, obviously, there's not. Uh, is and, there two? Is there two quarterbacks in the league that could be as as weekly high, high ceiling as Lamar? You know, yeah, I mean, right now like, it's, you know, maybe three he's uh, he's got he's he's qb1 potential every week mm-hmm. you know it's just that he's they got the new offensive coordinator the wave is coming back up you know and but just three months ago everybody hated him you know it's coming back around it's coming back around and he it just he you cannot have a conversation. You can't hear anybody talking about Lamar Jackson that even if they're all pro Lamar, pro Lamar, pro Lamar, they have to say he didn't finish the last two years. Mm-hmm. You can't get, you can't have the conversation <laughs> about, you can't. And if you're beating him up, then of course that's what you're building your conversation on. But if you're pro Lamar, like, I mean, I'm very pro Lamar. I'm just like, if I would, all, I have a team, you know, the Eastern Superflex League. I, I, I got Lamar, and I'm, we, my team, mine and your team are, are going to be set up to be, perennially top, two, three, maybe championships. Maybe we alternate some championships for a few years. Years, and I'd still be interested in going, you know, to an Anthony Richardson or, um, I got, I think you got the um dude on the Jags whose name just ran. Trevor out. Lawrence. You, I mean, I, I could go down. I could take Trevor Lawrence plus for Lamar. I mean, you got him, so I know you're gonna make that trade with me. But you know, the idea is, it's just the like Lamar Jackson blows his knee this year. That's yeah. that's not great. Uh, Trevor Lawrence blows his knee this year. Nobody cares. Right. He's brand new. He hasn't done it before. You know what right. I mean? Uh, Joe Burrow blew his knee two years ago, I, and it went an awkward way of sideways. And I was kind of like, ah, oh, I got to pump the brakes on buying into that. He came back, boom. Uh, you know, he's a top three quarterback in the yep. league. Maybe not every week in, week out, top three points for fantasy, but he's like, you know, this new age Joe Montana, you yeah. know? Yeah, no, if you're tearing it, you know, you can go, I, you know, I could go even further down with a quarterback. If you're tearing it down to the sticks, you're trying to, you keep Kyler and you're trying to get Caleb Williams or whatever, and you're, you're accruing draft picks like, you should be if you're getting off of the Barclays and the Kelsey, you should be getting draft picks plus, plus young players. Yeah, exactly. So, 
All right. All right. Good enough uh, for that one. Let's, let's move off that team. Let's move to another team, a little, uh, you know, sitting on the dock of the bay or, or, or ship chasing here, contender, pretender. Uh, we're going to go over to a one quarterback team. All right. Um, to our guy, Deese. One quarterback, start three wide receivers, tight end premium. He says this team's, you know, perennially uh, mid, as Perennial the, the youths uh, would say. Um, you know, so he wants to know kind of same deal. Should he should he try to whip this into a, a pretender with some moves or, or you know, kind of move off? This is a, a bit of a longer list of teams, and it's tight end premium. Uh, I don't believe it's specified if it's 1.5 or 2, but he's got golf and Dak. This is one quarterback. Uh, Barkley, Dylan, JK, ETN. He's got Gray to go with Barkley. Najee, Jordan Mason, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, Ayuk, Amari, your boy Brian Edwards, uh, Landry, oh. Rondell, Pittman, Samuel, Slayton, Mike Dub. Tight ends are Dulcich, Pat Fryer, Muth Hooper, Juwan Johnson, uh, Brevin Jordan, and, and Knox. And then on the taxi squad, he's got another tight end in Janu. He's got Kenny Pickett. He's got Stroud. He's got Jerome Ford. He's got Spears, Kenny Walker on the practice squad that's solid um marvin mims kincaid and uh washington uh from pittsburgh the tight end that they just drafted so uh pretty pretty solid taxi there uh with very some, solid with taxi. some youths um and like you know i think you led this off as when we were talking about it as you can see that there's you know he hadn't had all his guys especially in that running back room Sure. On the field at the same time. Yeah. Which that's is just first, devastating. You're just spinning wheels for years. Right. First glance at the team, you see all the injuries piled up through the uh, the running backs. And, you know, the A.J. Dillon didn't get hurt last year, but they took him out of the offense for a while. It felt like J.K. Dobbins is, man, when he's on the field, he's awesome. And he's not been on the field often. Travis Etienne blows his foot off his first, you know, before he even plays the first game for a rookie year. Has a good year last year. Najee Harris played with you know screws in his foot metal plate in his foot last year saquon barkley we know about his injuries in the past so he's you know perennial mid and then the another big thing for this team is to be start three wide receiver yeah, you yeah, know you got some decent names if you only had to start two of them but to start three every week mike williams has been hurt curtis samuel has been uh, unless Carson Wentz is thrown to him. Unless Carson Wentz is in there. <laughs> he's, he's fine. He's a good he's an okay receiver. He just cannot that, start he's him also if, buried, you right. know, good good core all of a sudden. Yeah. Bad quarterback. You know. Brandon Ayuk will make you pull your hair out and you know, um But been, uh, he's been progressing in the right direction. Oh, sure. I mean and he's 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 solid, but he's not in your line lineup every week. He's he's Felt a better last great year. Great wide receiver. It's just you know, I, I believe from week six or seven or eight on, he was like w, wide receiver six. So he I did saw the stat. And, I, and a lot of that also is not just the stat was put up uh, post Christian McCaffrey because the way they kind of changed the mm -hmm. offense. But I think it also Debo uh, was out. It lines up straight with Purdy in there running the offense. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't tell, I'm a huge Purdy guy. <laughs> Um, I mean, Amari Cooper is super solid. Brian Edwards let us all down, pour one out. Jarvis Landry, he just ran out on you. He was great, you know, five years ago. Um, Rondale could still be a potential starter here if the uh, Cardinals could get anybody to throw the ball. Pittman, again. So you got Pittman, Amari Cooper, Ayuk, and Mike Williams. And you got to have three out of four of those guys every week to start. That You know, that's not, that's not how not you win ball Not games. ideal, especially when... It's one thing if you can get murderer's row of running backs rolling every single week, but you haven't been able to. They've been know? hurt, and your wide receivers aren't good enough to be three wide receiver team. Right. Like, that's – I've been saying it for years. You can always find a wide receiver. When you go from two wide receiver to start three, that changes everything. Mm -hmm. It really does. Like you said, I mean, if you have a, if you have a murderer's row of running backs and it's tight end premium, if it's, especially if it's right. two points. A and then you have a serviceable guys like these, you're yeah. all, you're okay. You if, can get through. Right. If, if it's super flex, you got, and you got in a, in a tight end premium, then you can adjust for those wide receivers, especially if there's extra flexes and you could fill those flexes with a, if it's like two point tight end premium and your flexes are full of tight ends, like then that's fine. But if, when you go to three three wide receivers, it, it tightens it up a little bit for sure. Because now, I mean, 12 more got started 
and everybody's protecting that fourth one because they need to know, you know, so it just, it just got a lot tighter starting three and it makes it fun. I, I've, I've not been a big three wide receiver starter yeah. um, guy. I haven't enjoyed that, but if you put that along with super flex and tight end premium and it just spreads the wealth out. You know, if you don't, if you're lacking here, you might have a strength here. If you have a strength here, you might be lacking there. So it just spreads it out and makes it fun to see people's roster construction. So anyway, with this team, he's a perennial mid. Kincaid on the taxi, Marvin Mims, I like a lot. Kenny Walker, Taji Spears sitting there waiting for something to maybe happen. Dak and Goff, neither one of them make you jump well, up and, and down. And you but got Pickett and Stroud. So you, you have a you have at least a quarterback to throw in some stuff too that that's like yeah I, you know i know it's nothing sexy but it, you know sometimes you know like in our home leagues you you know that's depending on the league you, a quarterback that's, can can help make a trade for somebody like, that's a really good point you could take pickett and or stroud you could throw pickett and stroud in the same trade you got golf and dak you know if right. if, the, if a quarterback helps get something done gets the gets the trade done you know don't sit here and get hung up on like well i got stroud i, I need this to get rid of him if you're trading away you know Travis Etienne and this for that and the guy doesn't have a great quarterback situation and you can throw you know Stroud or Pickett on top of it to get the deal done uh, getting good deals done that are you know decent enough on both sides to make people accept them is harder than it sounds it really is so if, if you got that piece to throw it over and you get in this you know this strategy he's got tons of tight ends tons of tight ends so um, for his sake, I hope it's two-point tight end premium, but it's most likely 1.5. Two points is not exactly as popular as it should be yet. Um, it's just that makes it a lot of fun. What's the uh, what's the first running backs that you're sending off? Three wide receivers. I, I was I might say play the game for a couple of weeks and see how it rolls. So your your team might be okay. You perennial mid, you might spike and have this. And I'm, I'm not saying you know tear it down, but I guess first of if I gotta send somebody out. Nobody likes Najee Harris but you. Um, Travis Travis, <laughs> ET, you, Travis Etienne's going to have some some big splash, splash plays, so you can't. I wouldn't trade him until he looks awesome because there's just too much Bigsby buzz. Yeah, you're. You know, I'm not saying Travis Etienne's anywhere near the clearance rack right now, but he's not where he was before they drafted Bigsby. Um, ah, I mean, even then there was just plenty of Et hate all last year. Sure, but he went out and performed last year, and you got the coach that is talking about how awesome he is. Um, I mean, I, I would say let Travis Travis Etienne make some plays, and you could use him. Let the let the world see how consistent Najee Harris is without you know if he can make it through you know um, preseason without hurting his foot this year. He crushed the last three or four weeks of the season last year. I'd say let Najee Harris hit the field, and like, I mean Najee Etienne, the Barkley a decent quarterback and you got tight end points. I mean, I, you might be, you might be winning some ball games. You, you just, you're, you're thin at wide receiver. So you might even be able to make a trade and throw a good wide receiver in there. You trade a, trade a tight end trade. You got Kenny Walker on the bench. That's huge. Yeah. You know? un unfortunately you took a blow there a little bit with the value on Kenny where you could have came in and, and he could have been the guy you sell this year with, with buzz and hype and, uh, you know, in a pretty easy sell. Uh, Kenny, Very easy Kenny was sell. coming as as oh. a third running back off the board when you know pre-draft. Very easy sell. You know, so that would have been an easier sell. So it's it's basically it's got to be Barkley um, if you're selling, and 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 maybe you put Barkley and J.K. Dobbins together here to try to get something done. I I don't hate the idea for this team is is not to rush anything. You have a lot of you got some potent pieces and running back and just try to capitalize on a little bit of a week to week uh situation there um you have you got good tight ends you got dulcich which is a good shot you got pat fryermuth who was second on his team in, in targets and receptions i believe last year and you got kincaid chilling up here yeah um, i mean kincaid is super fun to see on your team especially, especially if in, it's two point premium yeah he's he's so much fun to have on the team um so, I mean, but you have guys like between what, you know, the, the great point you made about having a quarterback that could to get, you know, to throw in and you got Fryermuth, And so Dulcich people, so somebody in your league may be hip on Dulcich, you know? So between a, Hey, I got a quarterback that I could throw you. I got a tight end. I could throw, you know, I could give you Dulcich, Dulcich. you know, 
Um, I don't know if I'm itching to trade away Fryermuth, but you could. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know what the flex situations are. Like you right. said, if you could start Fryermuth and, and it's two points, and maybe Kincaid can slide in there. I mean, both of them. I mean, even an important half, both of those guys are worth starting. If yeah, you, they certainly if could. You need the flex if you if you got the flex spots. You do have good running backs, though. I, I mean, I'm not. To... I'm I'm waiting. I'm holding Kenny Walker currently unless i'm trading him to the charbonnet owner and getting a little bit more than the average person's willing to pay because i'm still big on walker and you either a need a charbonnet injury to say this dude's abs you know top eight what running back in the league fantasy points wise or you know b he's still an rb2 and you just he shows how good he is you know i wouldn't be trying to trade he's still young i wouldn't be trying to trade walker off of this team like you know barkley's the obvious one take your gamble as long as you'd like i'd like to i'd like to have barkley on the field for a couple weeks at least went one or two weeks and just see that giants offense take the next progression and see how much easier it is to to get barkley into space when teams have to watch you know running you know a good offense with you know waller out there unguardable jalen hyatt speed stretching out paris campbell doing things you know this you know wandale robinson was making plays last year he got hurt after just a couple of weeks barkley was out there by himself yeah you know you had the threat of the quarterback run but basically i mean picked up hodgins off the street who you know yeah. slayton when he's not hurt is actually a pretty decent receiver but he never yeah. gets any love you know you like, got him got him so you know let the giants take a step forward before you sell barkley and then it really sometimes it takes the players in your league to figure it out you the the best team in your league he knows he's the best anyway so he may be buying barkley um he may not be buying barkley but you after two or three weeks there might be a three and oh team that's supposed to be one and two and that might be the person that takes barkley off your hands and mm -hmm. pays a pretty penny and they they don't understand the reality of the situation just that three and oh could be they might have played the second and wor the, you know the worst two teams in the league that week, you know as far as like points scored against, you know I might be playing against Casey, his team might suck, um, and he beats me because my team laid a dud that week, you know, mm -hmm. and then now Casey his team sucks, he plays another person and their team lays a dud. Now Casey's two and zero, oh, three and zero, oh, and his team's not that good, but his head gets big and he's like I'm 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 rolling, you know we all there's always one person in that league that you know. I could name two or three in some of our home leagues. If they were three and zero, they wouldn't understand that they weren't. And if they might be three and zero and still be good, yeah. But they could easily, the way fantasy works, sometimes you could be two and one, you could be three and one, three and zero, and you should be the opposite. Yeah. So I mean, J.K. comes back in training camp here. Maybe he gets a little hope. So little Jeez. little tick up, and maybe he could be the guy you move. So. Just trying to find the pieces hold, that you can move. Hold A.J. Dillon if something were to happen to um, Aaron Jones. You yeah, know? yeah, there's no reason to be selling him right now. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could if you could take Barkley and and pivot down to one of these younger wide receivers um, and, and get something on top of that, like, would you would you want, a, like, a, an Addison or a, or a Jerry Judy or a Traylon Burks or um, any of those guys interest you for, for – to come from Saquon down to those guys. And then, you know, then you maybe additionally pick up a pick or um, another wide receiver or, you know, move, move even further down to like a guy like flowers and try to get like a flowers and somebody in the range of, of like flowers and Deontay Johnson um, uh, and, and, you know, a pick or, you know, it's just a rather, how much can you get for Barkley? Sure. Is going to be give, the, the conversation. I'd give Barkley for any of those like first round wide receivers in the draft this year. Um, obviously, you know, the Zay Flowers and the farther like, you get down in the first round of the rookie draft this year, give me Zay and give me what to get Barkley. The plus is a, a big question mark and be a, a, be a huge addition to the team if you made the swap. But like um, the Addison you mentioned, the Quentin Johnson – obviously you know barkley goes before those guys in a in a startup yeah so if, but you, then if you, you you leave the league and it's like well would you give would you give one four would you give one five for barkley and you know barkley and and the rookie draft you know so it's yeah i mean that that seems like cheap barkley at that point you know saquon's a three nine overall pick in the adp for us or the ffd adp super flex tight end premium 
Um, so obviously we're not talking super flex here. It's just one quarterback, but like if you went all the way down to Addison, that's a difference of two rounds in a right. startup. If and you I'd go be, down to Zay Flowers, that's a seventh round. So that's a difference of four rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for something, looking for something really fun for that, for that move, you know, a, right. a, a projected mid to high first would be a huge you grab pickup. a first and Zay flowers. Yeah. Something like that. But I mean, the idea of, you know, the Quentin Johnson, the Jordan Addison, um, obviously JSN at the top of that tier, um, maybe in a tier of his own who, depending on who you're talking to, um, to make that move going in, but like knowing that you would do it. And then how much more can you get yeah. on top? And you can juice that that move up with, like you said, a tight end like that or a, or a, a one of those quarterbacks if that's what he needs. You obviously need to see what his team needs. Or you could like somebody like, hey, you're giving me two better receivers and a pick or something. How can I make that work? But then I can throw in, exactly. you know, a Rondell or I could throw in or the quarterback uh, uh, the quarterback or, or the, the tight, tight end, end. Or, or throw in both of them and try to make a build, bigger package. And But the, I'm all, this is my go to every time I show up here. If you've been listening this long, you're really into this and you understand how this works. Like you cannot just say that's what I was just trying to get into. And I didn't really say it eloquently at all. Uh, the ADP for a startup existing league values, right? Separate, completely separate. Yeah. You can I, use it as a guideline, but it's yeah, not gonna... I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the startup right now and the, you know, Aaron Jones is getting taken before back mid late first round rookie picks it's like would you give one nine for aaron jones no yeah but it, could you get one nine for aaron jones no right but you just he but the somebody's team build they were like i need aaron jones because i've already they built it out and they're like oh i can win yeah let me get aaron jones but you know this guy's staying here on the you know this this player who's getting drafted at one eight one nine in the rookie draft is sitting there on the board or it's like you know so people they're it's different so that being said, you know, hey, I'm looking at Jordan Addison. I want Jordan Addison off that off my your team, and you won't take one off my team. But there's a two round gap in the in the startup. There is a two round gap in the startup, but we're not in the startup, you know. So yeah. what? How much can I get from you to give you Barkley to get Addison, knowing that you know Addison is a 21 year old rookie that everybody's in love with, and you know Barkley's an awesome 26 year old running back who stayed healthy last year but what if his knee explodes this year right you know and you can't play that game and ruin your t you can't not have any running backs ever <laughs> yeah you know it's just pick your put when do you have them you know right and trying your best even if you have them even if you're even if you're trying to win this year and you can win you should still be trying to be like well, obviously Brees hall's different because he's coming back from acl but Barkley plus what gets me Brees Hall. I'm still heading towards winning, and I just cut my running back down three years, or, right. or you know, took yeah. three years off of his age. Yeah, even you know, four. You know what I mean? So right. like, it's that's 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 the game that you need to be. Even when you you're being productive and trying to decrease that age for those running backs. Like if if you got a team right now and you're like, oh, I'm the best. I got a team right now in, in the at the first FF Dynasty League that we did. Um, I got Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon. And I've won three out of four years. I'm super old at running back, but my team is so stacked. Yeah. You know, and I got a chain in the rookie draft and I got Alexander Madison on the bench, but other, I have zero running back depth past my starters. Madison just appeared out of nowhere because cook left. Sure. You know, so now I got a third running back, but I didn't have a third. He was my third. Right. And then a chain just got from the rookie draft at two, two, I believe. Um, super flex. So, you know, I got some youth now with a, with a guy that I just added, but it's like, well, how do I go from a year? I'm, I won three out of four. I'm going to go four out of five. I don't want to trade Christian McCaffrey. Right. You know, but if I trade Chris, especially if he's heating up, you know, if yeah. he's NBA live and on me, he's, getting, he's heating up, he's crushing down. Uh, so but how do I go from Christian McCaffrey to somebody two years younger? That's right. relatively close to his production. But when you got, you know, so it's you got those options when you got a good team. And when you got a not so good team, you feel you got the, the pressure is on a little bit more to make those moves. Right. Yeah. All right. You got anything else on this one? On the way out the door, shout out Jawan Johnson. Shout out Jawan. Let's go for Jawan Johnson tight end premium. Got to get, I'm telling you, man, I'm thinking he's going to get some points this year.